Hey friend and welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Morgan and you are on my homestead here in Wyoming and today is a fun day. We are finally getting our 2024 garden put in and I could not be any more excited. Now it's going to be a little bit different than normal because we are kind of doing a sprint. My parents are in town helping, Sam is here helping, and we have a storm to beat. So we are going to be showing you what we do and then I'm just gonna record a voiceover because we have wind, we have four of us in the garden working and it can get a little bit crazy. The rundown for today is we are first going to be putting in a new trellis system. This is probably something you maybe have not seen before. This is kind of a new idea. And so we are going to be putting that in. Then we're going to be getting all of our plants in. If today and tomorrow go according to plan, we will have about 500 plants in this garden in the next 24 hours. So I am really excited. We have a ton to do. So let's go ahead and get this going. We're gonna first start with our trellis. Then once our trellis is up, we'll put in tomatoes, then peppers, then onions. Then I think we'll probably do carrots, cucumbers, those types of things. And then I'll go in with the big seed items like pumpkins, squash, uh, watermelon, cantaloupe, all of those items. So if you've been here before, you know we have our potatoes already in the ground and we have our garlic already in the ground. Those are things that will be in the garden, but they are already in, they are not going in today. So let's go ahead and get going down to the garden and get this day underway. The crew is here and we are getting going on these tomato trellises. So the first thing that we needed to do was punch a hole in the top of the T-posts. This hole will be used to run the cable from the top of all of the T-posts. And that is how we will connect them and hang the tomato trellises off of them. I will be sure to give you a full tour of what these trellises look like towards the end, but here we're just using our eight foot T posts. And then after the holes were drilled for us to run the cable through the top, I am going ahead and getting the weed cloth burned so that I have a hole in the weed cloth in the row that I want this trellis to sit. Then we are going to go ahead and just pound these T posts in with a T post pounder. Definitely make sure that you're leveling it as you go down. That's what my dad is doing here. He has a level and my mom would hold it in the correct position to make sure that as we were pulling it down, it was going into the ground nice and straight. Now, this is the other side of that trellis that we are pounding in now. So we in total used three. So we have one on each side and then here we're just measuring to get that middle T post in as well. Then I went ahead and just ran the cable through. This is leftover cable. You can see it behind me in our fence. Uh, we just recently cabled the rest of our fence a little bit tighter to keep the goats out of our backyard. And so we had leftover cable. So I'm just using this. It cost us absolutely nothing. It would have gone to waste otherwise. And then we have these U-locks that we are just using to hold the two wire pieces together. Now we didn't worry about pulling the wire overly tight because we want the wind to be able to move ever so slightly so that the tomatoes can kind of naturally move in the breeze. If the wire is too tight, it won't be able to do so. Uh -huh. thing. Maybe she won't. <laughs> ah! No way. Shout out to my dad for making that look easy and carrying this group through on his muscles because there was clearly no way I was gonna get that cable cut. So don't get any snips any smaller than what we were using. Next, I'm going in and just putting a brace for this because we are only using three T-posts. I didn't want it to be too heavy once the tomatoes start growing and make those T-posts start to lean in. So in order to prevent that, we are just putting a bit of a brace on both of the sides. This one I just have pulling directly back from the uh, T-post. So it's in line with the T-post and pulling it backward. That way it can't slouch in. And then we did the exact same thing on the other side. So if you do try this trellis, I would definitely do so and make sure that you have enough room to create these braces. So to create this brace, I just nailed a 12 inch peg into the ground and then I have a washer on the top of it so that the paracord can't go up. Then I just tied a knot and I'm cinching down this uh, paracord onto itself and then tying it a few times to make sure that it is nice and tight. And then after the knots are done, I go ahead and just burn the bottom of the paracord in order to keep it from fraying. All right, so for our trellises, we have this cable and we're using these. I will link these down below. So all we do is we put this on top of our cable where we want our first plant. And then if you pinch it, it'll give you a little slack. You can pull it down. 
And then these clips we bought separately, they attach onto the string, which I'll show you in just a second. But what we're gonna do is just loosely tie this on. We want it to be able to move so that we're not pulling the plant too much. So I need to give it a little more slack. And then I'm just gonna regularly tie this to this paracord that we ran down the bottom. Just like that, then they can wiggle around and we can adjust these depending on where they're going to go on, on each tomato. And the way these work is it's a bunch of these clips that look like this and the string fits in right here. So like that. And then that will be the clip that holds onto the tomato and helps hold it up. And as the tomato grows, we'll keep putting more of these clips further up the string. And then when it gets too tall, we can lower the string down and it will be able to keep growing. Here's what our tomatoes look like with the actual trellis. So let's go ahead and get one going so I can show you how we're doing it. So. The way my weed cloth works is each green line is a foot apart from each other. So I'm planting each tomato a foot apart. So I'm going between the green lines. If you're new to weed cloth, you don't want to burn on the green lines because those are your structural points. So I'm just going to pull this back, go right between my green lines and line it up with the other two tomatoes. And you only want your hole to be as big as you need it because the bigger it is, the more odds or the higher the chances of getting weeds in there is. Then I am just going to shovel out some of that soil so we can get our tomato in. My tomatoes are a bit leggy because I don't know why to be honest, but they just ended up leggy. They had a ton of light, but they are about two weeks past when we should be planting them, but our weather stayed cold longer than it should. So they're pretty big, so I am going pretty deep with these tomatoes. If yours are smaller or not leggy, you don't need to go quite as deep as I'm going. I'm gonna go deep because I'm gonna plant this tomato in further. So each of these little hairs that grow on the tomato is a root. Then if you wanna check it before you pull the tomato out of its plastic, you can go ahead and put it in and see where it's landing. It'll go a little lower than that, but I think that's pretty much right where I want it. Then I'm just going to get this nice and level, and then I'm gonna to top it off with that soil that we just pulled out. Sure, that's nice and even pretty compact but not too compact just kind of fingertip should be good then i'm going to go in with my clips and i'm going to clip this every six inches running up the tomato so again you clip this into the string and then clip it on your tomato just like that and we'll run it every six inches Okay, so with these trellises, here's what we have going on. So we have that cable that you watched us attach here, and that is just going through three T-posts. We've got one on the edge, one on the end, and then one in the middle. And then we have this cable running here. Then here we have these clips. These are basically string on a spool. And what happens is the string runs from here, we can adjust the length of these really easily. So all I have to do is pinch and I can spin this up and down for getting the height right on the tomato. So that just sits. I have them about every foot or so as each of the tomatoes needs one. And then let me take you down. You can just see that we have clips every six inches. One clip is on the string, the back of the clip is on the string and the front of the clip connects to the tomato. And as the tomato grows up, we will continue to put more clips on the tomato. And this will give it about a five and a half foot trellis. And as the tomato keeps growing, we can let the spool down a little bit to add a little bit more slack to the tomato and allow it to keep trellising and growing tall. Then to get the plants in, we had all hands on deck, everyone planting, it was so great. 
So after all of the tomatoes are in, next we are going in and planting the peppers. So I am just starting these in the very next row. So you can see first thing I needed to do was run a string. That way I know the holes that I'm burning are nice and straight. And this year I'm really focusing on doing a row system. If you've been here in the past, you know I've kind of done some of those uh, island type systems. And this year I really want everything to be uniform and in a row. Once my holes were burned, I used this. I will link it down below. Basically what it is, is it is a hole punch from golf courses and that is how they create their holes and move them from place to place. And I had this idea one night that this could work so, so well and it does. All I do is once I burn the holes, I go in with this, scoop it, it pulls out all of the soil in one swoop. Then you just step on this little lever, it releases the soil. And then I still have all of the soil left when I need it. So I can go ahead and put the plant in and then with that remaining soil, top it off. And this year, my pepper plants, I am planting from most mild to most spicy. So I want bell pepper, poblano, anaheim, then jalapeno, trying to keep it down to a minimum this year just so I don't get too crazy with all of the varieties. Next, I am going in with my onions. So these onions are the ones that we started together. They came in a seed pack and I just sprinkled some in the soil. Now, so what I need to do is go through and loosen them. So we did it two different methods. I just kind of did the gentle shake method and Sam soaked his in water. Both worked equally well. I would go with either direction. I will say our hose water is incredibly cold though. So I think mine might've won for this. Then this is a side-by-side -side comparison of the onions I bought. The onions I bought are on my top side or now the right side. And the onions that I started are on the left. Now, both of them are currently doing equally as well, but I do have a larger bulb already started on the ones that we started versus the sets that we bought from, I believe it was Johnny's. They looked really healthy. They're doing really great, but it's just a little bit different side-by-side -side comparison. So you can see what those look like. So throughout the garden, I am planting the same holes in the same spacing all one foot apart that way each year it doesn't matter what I put in each of these holes everything is equally distance and so we are putting two onions in per hole these holes are rather large and so I know that I can get two full-size onions in here you can go ahead and see that storm that was chasing us we did end up getting rained on but it's a good way to keep us motivated and keep us working hard. So after we got the onions in, we went ahead and are working on another trellis. This is a different trellis. I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison to see which I prefer the most. So I believe this is a 16 foot panel. We are using three T posts yet again to drill those into the ground. And then we just tied those off with some wiring. So I just wanna see which way works best, which way was easier. I will say the tomato trellis took a little bit longer, but feels a little bit more durable and also easier for them to grow on because the plant is able to naturally grow. I also worry about the metal on the panel being too hot. So we will see, I will take you along on this adventure with me. But you can see here, we are just getting the rest of the items in. So I needed to burn all of the holes first before we put the trellis in. So once I got all of the holes burned in the ground, then I am going to go ahead and pound in the T-post and almost fall over right there. <laughs> So we are again using that level to make sure the T-posts are going in straight. And then we are just going to pound in each of those T-posts. Now I did keep all of the spacing totally equal. That way we can keep it consistent year over year. But on this side of the garden, I am planting some carrots and then also I am doing cucumbers and all of my peas that will be going on that trellis. So that way they have a great way of going up. You can see here, my mom and I are just planting the uh, carrot seeds. Obviously, we were kind of being in a race against that weather that you can see on the weed cloth, um, but we were able to get it in. I just poked holes and she set the seeds in. Here is a look at the garden. I am so proud and so excited to watch it grow. All right, friend, after two, well, one and a half days in the garden, we are finally done. So I have the trellises behind me. I got everything planted out behind me. The way this goes is it is tomatoes, tomatillos, ground cherries, then peppers, then onions, carrots, cucumbers, and peas from there. And then behind me, over here is running down these rows is where I have my larger things like watermelon, cantaloupe, squash. Over in this far corner over here is where my potatoes are along with in these bags behind me. And then I just have our raspberries, garlic kind of back in that weed area. 
That much weed patch is about manageable for me. So that's why I leave that not covered. It works really well um, with the raspberries and everything that is already in there. So I'm really excited to take you on a garden tour. We are also going to get a watering system set up in here. And I did want to take you and show you the other type of trellis that we have going. So here's the other panel trellis that we have put in. This will be for our sweet peas, our sugar peas, and also our cucumbers. I wanted to do a side-by-side -side comparison of each of the trellis types so I can get a feel for exactly what I prefer, and I will keep you updated as we go along with this. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and just getting this done. We really just grinded for a day and a half just to make sure that we got it done before the weather and before, you know, it got too late in the season. So I'm really excited about where the garden stands and I can't wait to take you along with me throughout the growing season. So make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss our trellis comparison, our harvest, our preservation. We have so much ahead of us and I'm really, really looking forward to it. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And also I would love it if you would share it with a friend or someone who might also like this kind of content. I appreciate each and every one of you being here and I will catch you in the next one. Bye friend.